Hi, I'm Kevin Lippman. And I'm Zane Olson. And this is another Ion Films tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at a more advanced screen replacement than last time. Um, I was planning on using Mocha, but unfortunately uh, there's a few things I need to figure out. <laughs> um, so maybe in the future, you know, cross your fingers. But uh, right now this is the footage we want to we want to uh, be the result. So you can see here that the footage plays on top of this laptop and you can see reflections in the background. Now this is some pretty bad footage. It's not my fault. Um, Kevin, what's the backstory behind this footage? Well, th this was actually for a, um, a school project and since we were tight on time we couldn't really figure out any lighting or we barely had time to do storyboarding as it is so everything just kind of had to happen right there and then and that's the best footage we could get at that time. Um, unfortunately, also because of the, the laptop name, we also covered it up because that particular teacher in that class is a little bit of a, a stickler for the details like that, you know, copyright. So I also covered that up. We're not going to cover that because that's simply a, um, a position and rotation keyframe using a null object and then just parenting it. So um, it's very, very straightforward. So we're just going to be fa uh, focusing on the actual footage itself. Okay, so now we're here in After Effects, and you can see our, our background footage is this laptop. Um, they didn't plan the reflection that well, so there's actually people walking around there, which is a little bit of a bummer, but, um, you know, it just adds adds that much more to, uh, to the effect. So uh, what we're going to do is uh, uh, take out the footage of the guy talking, and this is it. I don't know what he's saying. Has something to do about a a detective being unable to capture him. Um, <coughs> something that I noticed is yeah, that the story isn't too fleshed out. It's just about some um, detective trying to capture a hacker. But it's actually shot pretty good, considering it was shot in about like ten seconds, just because we had that much time left to film it. Um, the one thing I noticed is this guy right here is on the lamb from the police yet he has someone who's able to hold the camera for him you know he has an accomplice but he's supposed to be uh, anyway I just kind of it doesn't matter <laughs> what we're gonna want to do is go to the beginning of our comp make sure the playheads at frame zero go down to our comp that has a laptop on it and go track motion from here we're gonna do the same thing we did last time we're simply gonna go to perspective corner pin down here under the track type and pick our spots. Now, because our spots are just a little bit blurred out here, uh, we're gonna we're just gonna motion track this corner. That's a big trap. Yep. And then what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to take the the position that it applies the tracking data to and place that in the corner as best as you can. Might help to play with the exposure settings perhaps but that's if uh, if it's underexposed if it's overexposed then there's little you can do to find that that position um, here we're, to, we're gonna also track the corner here because the screen does blend into the border quite a bit yeah and you'll see that these kind of these move so that's the last thing you're gonna want to do you're just gonna want to place everything first uh, you can actually place this one right on there that one stands out pretty good and um, yeah, this one is also going to be in the corner. Uh, because this is handheld, you your search area will have to be, you know, a little bit larger. But it's not going to have to, you know, it doesn't have to be huge. So let's go ahead and uh, find these areas. Oh, whoops. Um, and you want it as as perfect as it can be. You know, you you want it pretty close. So. You do want them making 90 degree angles if it's straight on, of course, you know. Um, you know, use this as a, if you have one corner that's good, you can use that as a, uh, as a reference point. And then, uh, that looks pretty good. Maybe, maybe this one could use a little bit more of a, a push inside the track point, perhaps right about there. Um, remember, you're going to want to get this perfect on your first try uh, just because uh, you're going to have to go back and re-motion track everything if you screw it up. 
so no pressure. Um, then hit play. Make sure you're at the beginning when you set all that, and hit play. And uh, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna see it go. Actually, I'm gonna hit stop and just zoom out to make sure I can keep an eye on all the track points, just in case something, something bad happens. So. It doesn't look like it's tracking that great now, but that's because it's uh, there's a little bit of delay between the movement of the tracking points and the actual footage. So then you're going to want to make sure that your uh, target is set to the, your your uh, video that's going to be on the laptop, in our case, Guy AVI. And boom, just like that, you have a motion track of a guy on a screen. All right, so I'm gonna take it from here. So what we're gonna do now is uh, we're gonna try to make it like it, make the footage look like it's actually on the uh, screen, because right now it just looks like footage overlaid onto a screen. So um, we're gonna take our layer with the footage, which in our case is the uh, guy layer, and the first thing we're gonna do is look for the grain. So we're gonna go uh, add grain. So we're just gonna drag that out, apply it, and now we have. Um, our grain here. So we're going to come over here, we're going to go to uh, preview final output, and then we're going to want to make this about uh, 0 0.7 and 1.2 I'm thinking. That looks pretty good. So it kind of looks like it's been uh, recorded from like a cell phone camera then just played back so it doesn't look like really crisp video like the rest of it. Okay, so next thing that we're going to do is put our uh, Venetian blinds in place. So we're just going to drag this, put it on our layer, all right, so we're going to change this value to a 15, and this is already set to 90, and then we're going to set this to about 14, and then we're going to set the feather to 8, and that's going to produce like these uh, these lines in the video here. Hi, this is Zane again, I'm just going to go over some, uh, some quick color correcting for our layer here. Um, I'm going to type in curves. Curves is my favorite for color correcting because everything is uh, is very simple to adjust. Um, I think I'm going to set that by itself, but I'm going to bring the red down, give it kind of a colder look, and bring the green up just a little bit, and then bring the blue up as well, and that will give a kind of like an, almost a grayer look. I'm gonna do next is bring out the the tint. Um, you know, you can have it whatever you want. Uh, the lower you go, obviously, the less tint that you're gonna have. Um, I like it where it's not quite black and white, but you can still see the curves adjustment. So you know, maybe 50% or so. But that's totally up to you. Uh, depends on what you want um, from your footage. So. This is uh, kind of what we have so far. It's obviously going to take quite a while to render out because uh, because of the grain.